Okay, so I have another box that got shipped into me. This one's got a couple of smaller boxes in it. Let's go ahead and see what's inside. And we got some parts in here, a switch. Looks like maybe an STK power pack. Right off the bat, I see a bulged cap. Oh, some of you might recognize this. It's the hot plate from a subwoofer. Another Miller and Kressel. I think this one is a MX70 if I'm not mistaken. Anyhow, the customer said he did a little bit of work to this. Already I see a loose resistor right here. Um, not sure what the power switch is all about, but I see a fuse in here. Another STK power pack. So it looks like he may have changed it. Ooh, I think it's in there backwards, right off the bat. It's supposed to be facing the other way. That's not good. So I can only assume that this is going to be the power supply. And yes it is. There is the power supply. So we've got the main power transformer, we've got the filter caps, and from what I can see, one is in backwards. You can see the positive right here, and the negative is attached to that. So we'll do both an ESR check and an ohm check on these capacitors. So verify zero. All right, that one checks good. That one checks good as well. Because this one is connected backwards, let's do an ohm check just to make sure it's not shorted also. Okay, so I've got my 115 this time in the ohm range, and I have 0.3 ohms with the lead shorted. So I should see zero and then charging, and I do. That looks good. So I see about 2.2K. Check the other one, should see the same thing, zero and then charging. And I see, once again, 2.2K and charging. Now this one does have a couple of equalizing resistors here across the capacitors. And it looks like they're 10K resistors. Physically, they're attached to the board, so that's good. So right off the bat, this capacitor right here is installed incorrectly. Once again, there's the positive. Let's see the positive mark right here. So on both of these capacitors, the negative should be on the right-hand side of your screen. And as you can see, this one is correct. This one is backwards. So we'll have to correct that, clean up the soldering a little bit on this as well. Just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and go into the diode range and we'll check the bridge rectifier. So we should get 0.6.7. Let it charge up. Here we get 0.468, that's perfectly fine. Now we'll go from this input to the negative. I can keep my lead on there. That's good. So those all check good. Let's go ahead and look at the hot plate now, see what's going on with it. So yeah, right off the bat, what do I see? We saw it in the box, this bulged capacitor right here. So we'll go ahead and just completely pop this off. Four screws, the unit comes right out. And we'll probably have to unsolder this chip, look at the connections, and then this resistor right here, which definitely is not even soldered anymore. Okay, well here is the resistor that's completely broken free from the board. You can see it's not even attached anymore. That could definitely be a problem. I believe this is a dropping resistor used to drop the 40 or so volts down through a Zener diode and a capacitor to make the plus and minus 15 volts that the op amps need. Other resistor is in the same exact boat, leads not even soldered. So the chip is installed backwards. This is pin one where the dimple is right here. And if I flip the board back over, this is where the dimple is on pin 18. It should be over here on pin one. So it's installed absolutely backwards. Let's go ahead and ESR these other caps just for the heck of it, including the bulged cap and see what it checks like. Okay, so I've got the capacitors marked. One, two, three, four, five. We'll start over here. Let's verify lead integrity first. And perfect, zero ohms. So I wanna see basically a half ohm or less, you know, right at a half an ohm. 
This is a 10 microfarad, perfectly fine, one and a half ohms. And that one's just over half an ohm, I don't like that. And one and a half ohms for the 10 microfarad, that one's fine. These are 100 microfarad capacitors. That one actually still tests good, even though it's bulged. It's probably bulged because the chip was installed incorrectly. I don't know if the chip's going to be good or not. That's going to be a tough one. I'm going to have to do some measurements on it. I'll get a printout and find out if it looks good or not. If it's good, we'll go ahead and use it. It's a brand new chip. We'll just get it installed in the correct direction. We'll get this repaired. Probably going to go ahead and replace the capacitors just to be safe. Okay, so I've got the chip unsoldered and the pads have definitely seen better days. I'm not a super fan of this type of circuit board. The pads lift off very, very easily. So if you do want to change one of these on your own, you have to be extremely careful. So instead of trying to unsolder each pin on a chip like this, I suggest if you're sure the chip is defective, just go ahead and use some cutters and clip each pin off so the chip can be removed completely and then individually, one by one, very gingerly unsoldering the pins, cleaning the pads and getting ready for reinstallation. This one's gonna be a fair amount of labor to repair all these damaged traces. It's really chowdered up. Anyhow, I have the chip out. So let's go ahead and do some ohm checks on the transistors in the chip and see how they test. We'll start on pin 12 and we'll go from 16. I get a good diode and 18, another good diode junction. That's perfectly fine. And then we'll go from pin 14 to 13 and 17. Okay, get a good diode there. and a good diode there. So the output transistors test good. Now we'll test the drivers, pin 10 to pin 12. So good junction there. And then 16 and 18. Perfectly fine. And then we'll go from pin seven to pins 13 and 17. and I see good junctions everywhere. So the output stages test fine. Now testing the input stages because this chip was put in backwards is gonna be a little trickier because I don't know what the values of some of these resistors are. So I can check from pin four to pin six and get one junction on this transistor. I can check from six to one to two and get one junction on these transistors, and then pin nine, I can get this junction, but I really don't have a way to get the junction on this one unless I pass through the second transistor and go back to pin 15. Uh, this transistor TR8 is basically, I don't really have a way, unless this is an extremely low value resistor right here, I don't have a way of getting to the base of this transistor to test it, as well as I don't know what the value of this resistor is. We can just go ahead and do some tests just for the heck of it and see what we might come up with. So let's start with pin four on the base and then pin six on on the collector and for the heck of it we'll look at pin 5 on the emitter through this resistor and see what we get. So pin 4 to pin 6 and I see a good junction. Let's reverse it. Nothing. Absolutely perfect. And how about pin 4 to pin 5? And I see a junction. Good. So I'm going to call TR5 as good. Now we'll go from pin 1 and we'll go to pin 6 and I see a junction. We'll test the reverse. Nope, that one tests perfectly fine. So next we'll go from pin two, and once again we'll go to pin six. And I see a junction there, we'll test the reverse. Not open, or not shorted, that's good. So now we'll go from pin one to pin eight. I get a good junction. So how about pin eight to 15? And I do get a junction in one direction, so that's fine. So four to five. I get a junction in one direction, that's good. And then four to nine. 
and SC adjunction. So as far as I can tell, everything tests fine in this thing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get a hold of my customer and see if he wants to put a few hours of labor into this unit to see if we can get this thing up and running. Once again, I'm gonna suggest that we change all of the electrolytic capacitors on that board. I don't know what stresses they've been through. And we'll have to repair the pads on the circuit board, repair those resistors that are broken loose because it's not gonna work without those. Okay, so I've done a bunch of work off camera just because I'm kind of pressed for time. I want to get this unit out of here. I went ahead and replaced uh, both the filter caps, cleaned up the circuit board. Uh, it looks really good right now. Got all the old uh, chowder off of the board. The caps are definitely installed the correct direction. Negative on this side, as you can see, the positive is here and here. So those are up and running. Let me show you the main board. Okay, so I went ahead and replaced all the filter caps. One, two, three, four, five. And I went ahead and did a little bit of repair work on the board where the chip mounts. Haven't finished it yet. I have gone ahead and repaired the big power resistors that are broken off of the board. And I've added some RTV silicone. I did not want to use hot glue on this because RTV silicone is good for up to about 350 degrees. And I don't think that board's ever going to get that hot, but I've secured the main resistors back down to the board. So I've got all brand new filter caps replaced and the uh, big power resistors are RTV'd to the board at this point. Like I said, I've done a little bit of repair over here where the STK chip does mount to the board. So before I actually mount the STK chip back to the board, I wanna go ahead and power this unit up without the STK chip. And I wanna make sure that I'm making my plus and minus 15 volts, which is what these resistors actually do. They drop the uh, 40 or so volts down to 15 volts. And they use these Zener diodes right here. There's a big Zener there and a Zener right there. I wanna make sure that they are regulating the plus and minus 15 volts over to these op amp ICs before I go any further. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lift this up. I'm just gonna take a rag and put it up underneath here so it doesn't short against anything. And then I'll go ahead and uh, tentatively fire the unit up and make sure that I get my B plus and B minus rails like I should. And then I think we're gonna be okay to put the chip back in it at that point. Okay, so here is the pinout for the LM148, 248, 348. So I wanna look at pin four and pin 11. Now it tells me that the supply voltage on these, now this is an absolute maximum, is plus and minus 18 volts. I don't wanna go above the plus 18 and the minus 18 right here. So I'm gonna get the power transformer connected back to this unit and we'll hook it up to the variac, which is an isolated variac, don't be concerned, it is isolated, so there's no fear of electric shock. And I'm gonna wrap this thing up slowly. Okay, so I've got 20 volts AC going into this unit. I'm gonna check the positive and negative B plus rails at this point. So I've got about 7.4 volts positive and 7.4 volts negative, absolutely perfect. So just for the heck of it, let's go ahead and check those pins right now. So it's gonna be pin four and pin 11. We should have pretty close to raw B plus. So I've got 3.6 and negative 3.8. So let's go ahead and crank this up. We're at 20 volts AC. Let's go to 50 volts AC. So I've got 18.8 volts positive and 18.8 volts negative. Let's see what we're doing over here. So I've got 8.8 .8 and minus 9.5. So So I'm gonna go ahead and watch this voltage. I'm just gonna slowly crank this up We're at 60 volts. And it looks like we're gonna hold at about 12 volts right now, because I'm at 80 volts right now. There's 90 volts. There's 100 volts AC, and I've got 12.2 volts. What do we have over here on the positive pin, 11.9? That should be perfectly fine. So let's go ahead and take it all the way up to 120 volts at this point. There's actually about 125 volts. So I've got negative 12.5 and positive 12.2, absolutely perfect. I'm totally happy with that. 
So on my B plus rails, I have 46 and a half volts positive voltage and negative 46 and a half volts, almost perfect. So I think it's about time we go ahead and put the STK chip back in this unit and see if we can get this thing to fire up. Okay, so I have the new chip mounted. I've repaired several of the traces. I did have to lay a couple leads over right here and tack them down to the board to get them to take because the pads are just absolutely wasted on this. This pad right here is a no connection pad. It goes nowhere. The rest of these are pretty good. I did have to run a jumper from this pad that you see in the back through here to here and then the rest of the pads were in okay shape so i think at this point i'm ready to go ahead and mount this unit back up to the heat sink and we'll give it some power and hook it up to a speaker and see if we get some audio output okay so i have the amplifier board mounted back up i have went ahead and added a little bit of pretension to the pins on this molex connector the six on this side and the one on this side have been crimped in just a little bit more to add a little extra conductivity, a little extra tension. So everything's mounted. Let's go ahead and plug everything in. I'll hook a speaker up to it. I'll put some audio into it. We'll run the voltage up slowly and make sure we don't get a DC offset or a high current draw. All right, here we go. I've got some speakers connected to it. Everything is connected. I've got two 8 ohm speakers connected. I've got a mp3 player going into it with just some audio and I'm going to turn the power on and bring the voltage up slowly. There we're up to about 125 volts input. Let's get the volume level here. So far it's working absolutely perfectly. Even though these are only little six inch speakers, they are really putting out some bass. So you can see it there, pumping the speakers in and out. Definitely putting out some bass, even without the tuned enclosure and the MK speakers. So I'm gonna say this one is repaired. That is it. It's up and running. Just a few capacitors and some resoldering of the circuit board and the resistors. Hopefully my customer will be very happy. Another unit saved from the landfill. So at this point, once again, let me turn this down just a little bit. I wanna give a sincere thank you to those who have supported my channel with a donation via PayPal or by having me repair your unit like this one. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to my channel and liking this video. It really does help my channel grow. You can follow me on social media, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter at NorCal715. You can email me NorCal715videos at gmail.com. Go ahead, leave me a question a comment, a concern down below. I try to read all the comments and respond when I have time. Remember, with your help, we can try to keep these things out of the landfill, out of the recycle bin, and out of the e-waste facility. Everybody, once again, thank you for making it to the end of this video. I really do appreciate it. Everyone have a great day. Thank you so much for watching once again. Bye-bye.